We're going to trigger the Alpine Stars Tech Air system, but we're doing it manually. You, this cannot be done in normal circumstances. We have a lead from the back of the airbag system to the laptop where Jenny is over there, and she is going to trigger it, and it will go off, and you'll be able to see what it's like when the airbag goes off. She's only going to trigger it when I say now. <laughs> oh. I didn't say now. I said you trigger it when I say now, and I haven't said now. The Adventure Bike Shop, proud sponsors of Adventure Bike TV. Rubbish adverts. Greater adventure. Hello and welcome to Adventure Bike TV. Now, because this is the first episode of season five, we have got a bit of a treat in store for you. We're gonna take you behind the scenes at Geek Media, which is Tom's production company that produces Adventure Bike TV. But as always, we're gonna start with the bike review. Now, over the last couple of years, we've done reviews of scramblers from Ducati and from Triumph. Now, it's the turn of Husqvarna. It's their Svartpilen which apparently means black arrow in Swedish. There you go. Our panniers are built from the highest grade two millimeter aluminium. Metal Mule, engineered to be different. Proud sponsors of the bike reviews on Adventure Bike TV. Unsurprisingly, the first thing that strikes you about this bike is the way it looks. And I know beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And Tom behind the camera thinks it is one of the most beautiful things he has ever seen. And we will talk about performance later, but for now I need to talk about how I think it looks. And I'm afraid I don't think it looks beautiful. And this tank looks like somebody's designed it with a pair of wings and then chopped them off. Or maybe a pair of lips kissing up against a piece of glass although that's probably a bit too nice of the way to describe it. The back is just too solid. I know it's retro, but... <sighs> I did think when I saw pictures that when I actually came and stood next to it, it would grow on me, but maybe like a carbuncle. I mean, it's just not me. Husqvarna's Svartpilen is the Black Arrow Scrambler to its pure street brother, the Vidpilen, the White Arrow. Husqvarna described the Svartpilen as challenging all current design trends. Well, I couldn't agree more with that, but then I've made my views on the design abundantly clear. Sorry, I'm back with the design of it again. I just can't shake it. Okay, let's get to some real facts then. Priced at £5,599, the Husqvarna 401 Svartpilen is a grand more than the machine it's based on, which is the KTM Duke 390, but you are getting something pretty unique. The only thing I wish it had for that price would be a chunkier sounding exhaust, and I know there's legal limitations, but the stock item is barely audible at tickover. It would be the first and the only thing I'd change on this bike. I think it's probably fairly clear that I'm not the biggest fan of the way this bike looks. But now that I've had a chance to ride it for a couple of hours, I can give an opinion on how it rides and the engine. And it's a little peach. I was super impressed and I suppose in some ways I shouldn't be too surprised because it's based on the 390 Duke engine, which is a great engine. In fact, it's exactly the same engine. It is, I think, the smoothest engine of its size I've ever ridden. And the thing probably I'll compare it to is when we test rode 
the BMW 310GS, which I thought at that point was smooth. I mean, this thing is fantastic and it is strong. I mean, absolutely. What a blast to ride. And you forget you're on a little bike. That part of it, I quite like. The rest of the kit list actually is pretty good. The engine is a single cylinder, twin cam, four valve item, and the combination of the Bosch ECU with the internal balance shaft is what gives it that wonderful smooth feeling. I've said it before and I will say it again, that engine is a peach and probably the best small capacity single cylinder engine that I've tested. You will find a tank mounted luggage rack which I rather liked. You'll find a sump guard and you'll find chunky Pirelli Scorpion rally tyres which certainly means it looks the part of a bike with scrambler aspirations. The Pirelli tyres don't impact its road riding ability, which is an absolute hoot, and they grip fine on a bit of loose gravel. But this is a bike with scrambler aspirations rather than a scrambler built from the ground up. The suspension cannot really take anything other than gentle gravel undulations Proper bumps will have you out of your seat. The start pillin is also described by Husqvarna as simple and progressive. They continue by saying the bike embraces the simple spirit that originally made street motorcycling attractive. Reduced to the bare functional essentials, this motorcycle is the real deal. It is free of overly extravagant design embellishments. Well, it is a chunkier take on the Vitpillen, and the design is free of something. If this engine is so good, I would love to see what they could do with a scrambler version on this, the 701. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that the engine on this bike is a total peach. And actually, as a bike to ride around on the A-roads, I've had a fabulous time. I think it's fairly clear what my view is on the looks, but Tom and Sam that we've been riding with today, they both think it's the sexiest bike in the world, so what the hell do I know? I think what'll be interesting is get a scrambler version of 701. With that engine, that would be a serious piece of kit. I do think though, this bike, if you're a kind of funky monkey, you know, you're a, somebody who likes to leave your bike outside the wine bar because it looks cool, you're an A2 license holder, it's 44 horsepower, but you still want to be able to get out of the weekends, get out on some, some very dry green lanes and certainly some gravel roads, a little bit of kit on here, it'll be the perfect bike for you. But I wouldn't have one in my garage. I'm still not sure about those looks. Really not sure. The rubber feet on the Max Pannier allow better placement on uneven surfaces and protects from damaging floors. Metal Mule. Engineered to be different. Proud sponsors of the bike reviews on Adventure Bike TV. Okay, so Tom and I still cannot agree about the looks of that bike. So we want your opinion and we will post the results next month. Now it's time for a brand new segment where we're going to be giving you loads of fantastic travel tips. It's going to be presented by Claire Farrer, sponsored by Expedition 52. But just before we do that, I've got to work out how I get into the super secure location where Geek Media is located. Hi, 
Hi, and welcome to Adventure Advice, your monthly AA meeting with me, Claire, from Expedition 52. So some of you might actually know me from blogging on Chasing Horizons, or alternatively as the founder of Expedition 52, which is the resource center to help advise you guys how to travel. So a little bit about me, um, I've done a lot of traveling in the past, and most recently I've done a two year trip on motorbikes around the world, where we met a ridiculous amount of awesome people, had some great experiences, and in essence, we're trying to draw together everything that we've done and give it back to you guys so we can get you guys out there on the road on your own adventure. So this segment is all about you guys and what questions you have about traveling and questions that you want to ask that you might not have asked or don't really want to ask anyone, we will answer them all. So just drop us a message, whether it's through Adventure Bike TV, Facebook, Expedition 52, it doesn't matter, get them over to us. We might not know the answer straight away, but we'll do our best to find them out and get back to you. So first up, we are going to be looking at a very basic and simple question that we get asked all the time. It's one of those ones as well that has got so many different answers to it, but we're gonna try and give you a bit of a brief overview to help you get on your adventure. And the question we always get asked is how do you even start planning an adventure on a motorcycle? So here are our tips. Number one, route up and read up. <laughs> this is like my favorite part of the trip ever is getting inspired about where you want to go and the things you wanna see and do. So we recommend massively just to get out there Go online, check out some awesome bloggers, like register with them all, read up about what they're doing, watch some movies. Seriously, there are so many movies out there that you should watch. My personal favorites, obviously, has got to be Mondo and Juro. Can't get enough of it. It's old school, but I love it. Also, Long Way Round and Long Way Down. I know that's a bit controversial, but it was one of the major things that inspired me to go traveling. Pick up a Sam Mannequin book. Have a look at what you've got there, it's fantastic. And then grab yourself a map. You might not necessarily need a huge world map like this, but a physical map that you can have in front of you is awesome. You can go online and look at Google Maps, but it's just, it's not worth it. A map like this, you can pinpoint out exactly the places you wanna go. And if you're being a bit more specific and say you wanna go to somewhere in Europe, get a local map and pull it out and put on all the places that you wanna go and all the little road routes that you wanna do and just have an idea in your head as exactly as what you'd love to kind of see and do. It's a great way to visualize it. So sometimes though, you can be getting so excited about everything you can do. You might have tons of lists, tons of ideas. It's, it's ridiculously exciting. So you may just have to rein yourself back in a little bit. So if you find yourself getting a little bit frazzled and you've got way too many things and ideas of what you'd like to do, an idea is, is then to get a priority list going. By doing this, you can then have a look at some of the top things you'd like to do and the next few things we're going to suggest that you can do to help start your planning will then get that cut down a little bit further. Step two, time planning. So not all of us have a great deal of time to take off. And this is one of the major things you're gonna to have to consider before you go on the trip. Whether you have a weekend, a week, a few weeks, a couple of months, a year. If you can find out what you're able to do and what time you're able to spend out, that is your next step because that will then judge what you're able to do on the trip. When planning your schedule and the time that you've got, something to consider as well is how you're going to take on this journey. Now, some people are a little bit like me. I'm a bit of a kind of lazy rider. I like to go to places, chill out, take it all in, get on my bike whenever it takes my fancy, ride along, spot a dirt track, disappear down that for a while, come back and just chill a little bit. Whereas there's other people who are like just on the road all the time, enjoying themselves, doing some awesome dirt tracks, some awesome curves and awesome roads. And that's cool. So just bear in mind what kind of travel you're going to want to do because that will determine how far you can go and what you can actually fit into your journey. 
One extra thing we always like to suggest when doing some time management and planning in your route is not to cram everything in. Give yourself a couple of days off, a bit of leeway, so to speak. So if you do find something that you weren't necessarily planning to do, you can have the time to go do it and explore. Or maybe a local tells you of a site that you never knew of or a traveler tells you of a road that's amazing you must go down. You can do. Also, it does allow for any kind of little hiccups along the way. So any kind of breakdowns or possibilities of things going a bit wrong, so to speak. So yeah, planning those days off. This trip, if it's a long one, is possibly going to be a bit of a difficult one. So you will need some time out as well. And whilst we're on timing, check the weather and the climate of the places you want to go. I mean, there's nothing worse than going to a country and hitting like monsoon season. I mean, you can do it but it won't necessarily mean the best kind of adventure that you were hoping for. And number three, budget. Money, 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 money. Figuring out your budget for a trip is quite a big deal and sometimes a little bit complicated, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Now, if you like, you can plan it by yourself. Grab yourself a notebook or even an Excel spreadsheet. I love Excel spreadsheets. I'm like an Excel spreadsheet queen. Start jotting down then all of your kind of outlays for this kind of trip. Uh, that can start off with the biggest and simplest things. You may not have a bike yet or a bike suitable for your trip, so that's going to be one of your biggest outlays to consider. Some other expensive travel costs that you'll have to consider are things like fuel, shipping, flights, all these kind of little bits like that. Accommodation is another one. Now, sometimes that is expensive, sometimes it's not. If you fancy camping, that could be quite cheap, especially if you're going to do rough camping. Airbnbs aren't a bad call if you're looking at a cheaper side but want a little bit more of a structure over your head. And then you've got things like motels, hotels and luxury accommodation, which is lush, but not all of us can afford. And you know what? Sometimes you don't really want that on an adventure, so it's entirely up to you what you want to do. Additional costs to consider that some people don't think about are insurance costs. They're not necessarily expensive, but people don't necessarily think about them. And this is things like health insurance, travel insurance, bike insurance, all those kind of general things. Although I said the bike costs and the travel costs are probably looking at some of your most expensive kind of outlays, there's also some things to consider like carnets, people eat for carnets. If you're gonna be going on more exotic and longer travels, a carnet is probably gonna be a document that you really, really need, and they will take quite a big bite of your budget. We'll go more into those kind of documents as we go into the kind of other segments. But yeah, definitely something to consider. Carnets, visas, IDPs, all those kind of things. Like I said, we'll cover it in other ones. Trust me, it'll be really boring that segment, but meh, we'll do it anyway. So once you've pulled together some figures and get a rough idea of how much your costs are gonna be, we recommend adding a good healthy Oh, chunk on the end of it and at least have enough money that you can get yourself home in the case of an emergency. Make sure that that is definitely factored in. It's not nice to think about, but it's something to definitely consider. Now, like I said, if you've got your own spreadsheet going, that's awesome. If you've got your own notepad going, that's wicked too. But if you're struggling a little bit, then please feel free to log on to our Expedition 52 website, exp52.com and download our free budget planner. Completely free, just sign up, download it, and that should help you get on your way. It's got loads of loads of advice and loads of things that you might need to include that you've not necessarily thought about. So that's kind of a very quick and brief summary as to how to start planning your trip. Three major factors. One, route up and read up, my favorite bit. Two, consider your time factors. Get all your time sorted and you'll be fine. And number three, last but not least, your budget. See what kind of money you've got available and how much you want to spend to get yourself on the road. That being said, some people disappear off on their bikes without any plans whatsoever, which is a really cool thing to do. But a lot of the times, uh, a lot of people just don't have the kind of time factor. They just don't have the time to do that kind of thing, or they don't have an ever ending kind of budget. So you need to be a little bit more precise of what you want to see and what you want to do. So a bit of planning goes a long way because it makes sure you can see everything and have a little bit of unexpectedness along the way as well. Alternatively, if you're brand new to this or perhaps just want something completely planned for yourself, there's always the option of going on a tour where you have a great tour guide, get to see a load of sites and be back on time to go to work. Boo. 
So each month we're going to be answering one of your questions in full like we have just there. But we also want to get through as many questions as we can that you send in to us. So we will be having a bit of a quick fire session as well, which we're calling Welcome to the quick fire question section. Uh, we don't actually have any questions from you because this is our first segment, so get sending. But this time round, we're going to be asking some questions, or Tom is going to be asking me a load of questions about me. So you guys can know a little bit more about who I am and how I tick. Is that your natural hair colour? No. What's your favourite country? Sudan. What's your universal way of greeting people? Genuinely, that's what I do. <laughs> Are you going to go on another adventure soon? Oh, hopefully Mongolia or Norway. What makes you laugh? Silliness and other people laughing. Star Wars or Star Trek? Oh, <laughs> Star Wars. Best thing about yourself? My nostrils. I can smell everything. Everything. Worst thing about yourself? My nostrils. I can smell everything. Everything. <laughs> Most surreal moment of your life? Being awake for 178 hours. Favourite bike? My bike, KTM 690. What a lot of people do not realise is that Geek Media and Tom don't just produce Adventure Bike TV. Tom's worked on everything from TV series through to corporate work and adverts. And after Under the Visor, you'll see where it all happens. Don't ride here. Ride here. Explore new horizons with Moto Freight, proud sponsors of Under the Visor. Hey guys, welcome back to this new episode of Adventure by TV. Um, please, it will mean the world for Tom and Graham if you, you know, if you, if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you haven't done it so far, uh, hit that subscribe button. But let me introduce myself. My name is Ferry Fodor. I'm a very, very, very keen biker like yourself, guys. And on this uh, episode from Adventure by TV, I'm going to tell you a bit of things about me. So um, stay tuned. Hmm, how did I get into riding? Well, first, nobody in my family, nobody rides a bike. Somehow, I end up riding the bike. And a long story cut short, when I was really, really young, I was working something on my father's garage and uh, I've seen a fella pushing a bike, a motorcycle, like a really old communist type bike, 1967 or something like that. And um, I really liked it. I, that was my really first contact with a, with a motorcycle. And uh, seeing the guy, I just asked him, would you like to swap it? And the fella said, yeah, what you got for swap? So just to give you an idea, my dad had the only mountain bike in the whole neighborhood. And uh, I swapped his bike for a motorcycle that wasn't running. And that's how I got into the bikes. That was my first ever bike. And um, <laughs> I wore three months as an apprenticeship for that bike to be fixed. <laughs> but never mind, that gives, uh, gave me an introduction in the, in the motorcycle world. And since then, uh, 20 years passed, and I always had a bike since then. And I enjoyed every single bit and every single minute of that. So yeah, that's, what, uh, that's uh, how I got into bikings. My favorite place to ride, um, 
I'm a Romanian fella, and if you know, if you heard about Transfer Gresham, but Transfer Gresham is apparently the best motorcycle road in the world, according with, you know, some magazines and all this. Yeah, it is. It, it's a nice it's a nice road to ride. It is fantastic for views and all this, but for me, the most beautiful place to ride, the most beautiful country to ride a motorcycle has to be Bosnia and Herzegovina. I done a trip last year coming from Romania to UK throughout Romania, Serbia, Bosnia, Croatia, Italy, and back to UK. But by far the best, the best riding I ever had, it was on Bosnia and Herzegovina, and it was just absolutely amazing because the country doesn't have too many motorways, and it's it's still it's still it's not actually it's not part of the EU, and it's still uh, you know wild, put it like that, and you know it's not crowded roads are absolutely fantastic and yeah that, that i have to say it, bosnia was the best country for me to ride people are absolutely lovely roads are fantastic and um, they are not crowded that's that's all you need you need winding roads you need you know empty roads and you need good tarmac and lovely people and for me bosnia ticks all the bo boxes so yeah for a period of four or five years, I had a company called Motorway Transylvania, and I was providing fully guided tours in my home country, Romania. And um, to give you an answer to this question, how it is to ride uh, tours, it's, it's hard, it's demanding, Sometimes it's frustrating, but it comes with rewards. You know, like, like in, every, in every business, in every aspect, working with people, you get good people and you get, you know, difficult people and all that. But in the end of the day, if everyone has fun and everyone is happy, you will be happy yourself. Um, but, you know, in the end of the day, every, every, everything has to, has to, has to stop. So, Basically, I stopped the company because it was taking all my time, my private time. And uh, me and my wife, we decided to uh, allow ourselves a bit more riding time. So we stopped that one and we start. <laughs> we started, my camera is drifting, sorry for that. And we start, um, we start riding for ourselves. So, yeah, it is fun. If you have a lot of time, I would recommend for somebody to do it. If you don't have a lot of time, <laughs> and again, <laughs> the camera came back. I'm really sorry for that one, guys. Um, yeah, it is, it, is, it is a lot of fun to ride uh, tours and, you know, to be, to be part, to ride with different people and meet so, so many different people and so many... Uh, different cultures and all this because I have I had people from all over the world and everyone everyone comes with a, a certain idea about the country and they just discover that they've been wrong all the way you know so yeah time for me to to ride with my wife and allow ourselves a bit more time for us the story behind vlogs is I have a big mouth and a lot of people are telling me, listen, you have to do vlogs, you have to do vlogs, and you have to do vlogs. I always been a camera shy. I never like to stay in the camera. I never like to be in the spotlight. But because if, if you ever tried it, a lot of people don't like to hear their own voice. And um, it was the same with me in the beginning. But then an idea developed in my mind and I said, I have to do vlogs because it's true, a picture will tell, is, a picture is like a thousand words, but if you, if you gather all your memories in a video that will stay forever and you'll have it, a video will express a different feeling than a picture. 
and because of that I start doing vlogs and I really enjoy it to be honest with you I'm doing a video now and then but the main idea is to do travel vlogs to to film our travels and to document everything that we do so that's why I start doing vlogs and in terms of um, future plans um, I think we're gonna travel a lot we're gonna travel a lot and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna film a lot and uh, you know we, we're going from here to there and you know to be honest with you, I had a, I had a massive plan for this year, but it didn't work out. It didn't work out from different reasons. That it, it doesn't matter anymore. Um, so we had to shift all the plan from left to right. But in the end of the day, the most important thing is to to be happy and enjoy yourself and and think about the future all the time. What you want to do. And and in 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 my mind, I want to travel a lot. I want to I want to ride my bike, I want to travel a lot and I want to experience a lot, different culture, different people and you know. Yes, we we travel a lot together. Actually, I kind of forgot how it is to travel without my wife. We always traveling together and um for me it's no difference literally it's 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 if I, I can't imagine traveling without her. It takes a bit more planning to travel two up because, you know, one, ha one has different needs than the other one and uh, I have to accommodate everything. And, you know, when you're traveling two up, the gear that you're carrying is double. And you have to plan a lot. And you have to be very keen on what you're taking with you and you stay with your plan and stick with your plan and you know in the end of the day if you enjoy to do it do it to up you know because you get to share the best moments of your life with your best friend which is your partner or your wife or your girlfriend and in the end of the day when you when you when you sit down and you and you look back you'll think like that was a fantastic experience but in my idea, it wouldn't be such a fantastic experience if I wouldn't experience with that with my uh, with the person that I love. That's why we're traveling so much together. You know, for some people, you know, they wouldn't do it. But some people, you know, like me, they will always do it too. Up. It doesn't bother me. Um, you know, it's it's all right. The only thing that, like I said, is you need to plan in advance and you have to take in consideration that everything is double, like luggage is double and, you know, to accommodate your partner's needs and all that. But apart from that, it's just a fantastic experience. You should do it. If you haven't done it so far, just plan a trip together. See if it's working for you. If it's working, do it again. If it's not working for you, maybe it's not working and that's it. At least you tried it. In terms of future plans, Tom, like I said before, travel is the most important thing for me and my wife. My plan is to travel, film, vlog and experience as much as I can because in the end of the day you only have one life. and. In my idea, it's not fun to make money, it's fun to spend money. And I like to spend money on that tank, to put gas in it and hit the road. Like the South African people are saying, and I have, I have a few friends from South Africa that I'm pretty sure that they're going to watch this one and they're going to enjoy it. Um, go out, make some stories. So if you want to find out more and if you want to Follow me in my my travels and, and all this. Um, I think Tom is gonna link it somewhere above here. Uh, my channel on YouTube, and um, I will appreciate if you'll come by, have a look at my videos, and if you liked it, 
hit the like button and if you want to see more please subscribe the same with adventure boy tv like i said in the beginning fantastic guys cram absolutely lovely tom pff, huge fella uh, that's it for today on uh, adventure boy tv thanks for giving me this chance cram and tom don't ride here ride here explore new horizons with moto freight proud sponsors of Under the Visor. So, this is the gadget part of the production office. And to be honest with you, I've got no idea what's in here other than I know there is a drone in there because I know it's a DJI. There's other stuff, bags of it and bags of it and bags of it. I just know it's full of gadgets that I see when Tom brings them out when we're filming Adventure Bike TV. Now, it's time for a break. The Adventure Bike Shop, proud sponsors of Adventure Bike TV. Rubbish adverts. Greater adventure. Hi, it's Jenny Adventure Bike Shop. I want to show you the new Climb Ladies Artemis jacket. As with the older altitude, it's fitted for the female. A uh, lot more ventilation in this one. We have two, an arm vent at the top here. Also, these pockets have mesh in the back of them and there's an arm vent for just under the boobs. Um, adjustment in the side for when you're actually on the motorcycle. Uh, all throughout the D30 level, level 2 armour. Uh, as with the Gents Badlands, they've actually started to make some of the features for females. Uh, you can hook back your collar when it's particularly warm weather. Comes in this grey and red and a high-vis version as well. The Adventure Bike Shop, proud sponsors of Adventure Bike TV. Rubbish adverts. Greater adventure. The Adventure Bike Shop, proud sponsors of Adventure Bike TV. Rubbish adverts. Greater adventure. Welcome back. Now, for me, this is where the magic truly happens. So this is where Tom does all his editing, he takes all the footage we take with the drones and the cameras and the helmet cameras and turns it into the beautiful entertainment that you all get to see. Talking of beautiful entertainment, it's now time for top riding tips. And just to be absolutely clear for the, I think, single person who made a comment about it's not a professional riding tips. No, it's not. This is just riding tips. We will get to the high level riding tips later in the season and into next year. Enjoy. Hello and welcome back to Top Riding Tips. Now last month we were doing some of the basics about getting on and off the bike, but this month we're going to be getting into something a little bit more juicy, which is something scary for a lot of people riding on mud. So Mark, <laughs> yeah. right, come on, teach me. What are, the, what are the top things about riding on mud? Okay, well, a couple of things really you always need to remember is to try and keep your head up and looking out of trouble. So it's a term we use a lot, but look out of trouble. Keeping momentum on the bike in the right gear, covering the clutch at all times, yeah. looking out of trouble. And that's, that's a pretty tricky thing, because uh, you're, you're, yeah, yeah. your reaction is to instant kind of gut reaction yes. to try and look down at the ground no. in front of you, but you want to have eyes You can ahead. scan the ground and have a quick look, but you always need to be looking where you want to go. It's very important. And you'll hear this a lot during these sessions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, well, let's get to let's it. Let's go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, come in earlier. That's right. Get your head up, nice pace. Keep your head up, keep looking where you want to go. That is great. Keep going at that. Lovely, keep going. Really nice, well done. Well done, mate. I probably went maybe 10 or 20% faster than I'd normally feel comfortable with. Yes. And that, and again, massive conscious effort to lift my eyes up. To look a, a look away yeah. from trouble. Yeah. Those two things combined. Yes. But actually as the front as the handles were were flapping around. Didn't actually, really matter. It didn't really matter. No, and actually it. a bit more throttle actually when it started going and it just brought me upright. Yeah, it does. Because then momentum kicks in, the gyroscopic effect of the bike kicks yep. in, and all of a sudden you're not paddling. No. You're moving forward. I thought that was really yeah. good mate. Yeah, uh, made a big difference. Well done. Finally, a little bit of behind the scenes where I get involved. So this is where, if I'm in the studio, I do my voiceovers. And actually today, we've been recording voiceover for the Great British Bike Off, our new TV series. And Tom has been editing it. And uh, I seem to have segued perfectly into editing. Speaking of which, it's Tom and Film School. Hello and welcome to Film School. Now this month we're going to be continuing with uh, our building of a project on our timeline. And last month we looked at the audio side of things and we got a basic audio setup. So we had our, um, our interview audio in place and we'd found a music track that we think works quite well. So now we're going to start to look at the imagery. Now if you remember what I'm looking to do with this bit of video is, is hint um, at Bruce um, I don't want to reveal him, I want there to be a bit of intrigue, a bit of interest before the kind of final reveal of, hey, there's Bruce. So now we've got that audio in place, we need to start looking at what we're going to do with our, um, with our imagery. Now I went to Bruce's and I, I recorded a number of different shots um, of day-to-day -day things. So for instance, we have uh, a lovely little slider shot here. Um, of uh, Bruce's radio uh, and as we slide we see Bruce walking into shot. Um, now we've made sure that Bruce is not in focus. We're not concentrating on Bruce, we're hinting. Now this I think is a really nice opening shot. So now I'm going to go through and get all the other kind of shots that I think will work in, this, in that respect. So what I've done now is I've basically found the story I want to tell. I've gone through the clips and I've put them into the timeline and gone, this is a story I want to tell. I want to start here and I want to work my out. And it's quite a simple story I'm telling. Um, so it starts with the radio um, and Bruce going to get a cup of tea. Then we move on to the next clip, which is actually him putting on the kettle, then pouring his cup of tea. Then he's going to go and put some shoes on to go outside. Then we've got a slightly longer shot of him walking out of his door and towards his garage. Then unlocking his garage. Then we see him from behind, so we still haven't seen his face, opening the door to his garage, walking in, seeing the bike, some various angles of the bike. And what we've done is we've mixed this all in with what he's saying. So when he's talking about the bike, uh, you see the bike. Let me show you. People look at the bike in horror when they see it, you know, because she's battered. She's known as the beast. But I can't help but stop and look at her. And every little battle scar that she's got all over her tells a story, you know. It brings a little flashback. So I think that works really well. What we're doing is we're seeing 
as we're hearing him talk about the bike, we're also seeing him with the bike, touching the bike and showing affection for the bike because he's talking very affectionately about the bike. Now at this point, I wanted to add a reveal. I wanted to see Bruce, but he's been talking very emotionally and there's a great little clip. It sounds harsh calling it great, but he's got tears in his eyes and he's talking about his mum and saying that he wanted to make her proud. Now this is a perfect kind of semi-reveal. So we're seeing Bruce, but we're not seeing him talking to camera. We're still seeing him in his interview setting. So it's a reveal, but it's not the final reveal, not the final introduction. So we go straight into Bruce talking about his mother. Now we still have some sound levels to clearly change there because the background music is too light. But then we're going to have a break, we're going to put some titles in there, we'll cover that in another episode. And then finally, we're going to have the reveal. Now this is where the music crescendos or finishes and he speaks directly to camera and says who he is. I'm Bruce Smart. Live your life. So that's our rough cut done. And now at this point, this is where you really take the time to show it to some other people, get advice uh, on what they think uh, of just the kind of story you're telling and things like that. Because once you start doing color grading and things like that, it, it gets a whole lot more complicated, it's a lot more time consuming. It's better to make big changes in your cuts and edits at this point. So come back next month where we'll be looking at color correction and color grading. One of the great things about recording from the studio is you get to uh, play dress up with all the random treasure that Tom's got floating around. Is that recording? I shouldn't say dress up, should I? No, I'm trying to be interesting and different on camera. And I can't say bike build properly with this thing because it's hurting my chin. It's bike build. Hello and welcome to the second episode of Bike Build with me and Sam. Is that more energetic? Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, that? Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so today Sam called me and said he bought a bike. I've no idea what bike it is. I was under the impression we were going to discuss which bike to buy, which we did, but he said he found such an amazing deal that he's just gone out and bought it. So I'm now here at Sam's. <laughs> and here is Sam. Hello. Who right. apparently... Exciting, exciting, it's awesome. Come, come see. I'm, I'm nervous, I must admit, I am quite nervous. This is not it. Uh, I know, that's your bike. This is my bike, yeah. <laughs> come forward. It's not this one either. That's yeah, that's this, this. This one's the wife's. So it's this. Ta da! Would you like the grand reveal? Yeah, wait a sec, let me see if I can guess. Okay. What? The, the... To be fair, it's not, it's not a 660, is it? No. Go on then, let's have a look. What have you got? Da 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 da! <laughs> yes! It's a 990! But. Not quite complete. Check in, check it out. Look, it even ha even has wheels. Okay, they're not on the bike. Okay, let, let me stop you here. Yeah. Okay. I I let me. I'm gonna have to put the camera down a second. <laughs> so, behold the magnificence. Okay. So, when I gave you. Two grand of my money, and you put in two grand of your money. Yep. And we agreed to buy a bike. Yep. And I said, if you could find an amazing deal. Yep. 
you could get a 990. Yep. You've turned up with a 990. It's got no wheels on. Yep. Half a tank. Yep. Does it run? Well, don't know. <laughs> don't know. Don't know. It, it potentially could run. I haven't really checked it. The person I bought it off was sold a scene. Uh, I saw it. I mean, it, it, it doesn't seem to be any leaks or anything. I've had a, had a brief look around. But for the price... What, what was the price? Well, he wanted 1800 for it. But I said there was a stretch too far. Because so, you didn't know if it was running or not. Yeah, there's that, that option. So I got it for 1500 which is still a damn good deal, because the Acros are probably half that price. These are pretty good, aren't they? Yep. Well, apart from things are falling out of them. Yeah. It? So you don't know if this runs? No. So has it only got one half of the tank? At the moment, yes. But I do have other parts from my ni old 990, which I could potentially use. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. I'm not blown away by your decision. Oh, Tom. Because I was kind of hoping for a bike that we could just kind of get on and do the cool stuff with. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, okay, well, I guess this is our bike. Oh, and it, it does come with stuff. Good, look, yes. We have, we have our bike. Ish. It's not a Yamaha 660 or any of the other really cool ones that people suggested. <laughs> it's a 990 without wheels. Well, feel, fitted wheels with only half a tank. And we don't know if it's running or working in any way, shape or form. It's a Mione rally bike in potential. Yeah. Okay, should we go and talk about what we're actually going to do to the bike? Now comes the exciting part. Let's do this. Okay, so now we've got a 990. I guess we need to decide what we're going to do with a 990. Yes. I can tell you have still a slight sense of apprehension regarding my purchase. It's not so much, I, 990 is a great bike. Mm. You, you know I love the 990. Um, I think my, my worry is, one, it's... We like the rally style, but I kind of 990 is pretty much there mm. already. Um, and my other worry is this is meant to be a the segment's meant to be at how we take a normal bike and turn it into something different. And I feel like this is just going to turn into weeks of repairing a bike. Uh, th there is potential for that, yes. Um, I think for the, the cost, for the price we got it at, it, it was now or never. So I kind of took the plunge. Um, and it's, I, not, I, it's not that I don't think you've got a good deal. I think you've got a fantastic deal. Mm. And actually I'm quite excited. It just wasn't what I expected. So it was a bit of a surprise. Yes. <coughs> but I like surprises. So I know you. Yep. And I know that the second you've made the decision that that was the bike we were getting... You've done a ton of research and already found a load of stuff that you want to get for. And may I present it to you now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, what a surprise! It's already it, here. It just happened to be on the screen. Um, I've I've had, done my research. There are a couple of companies which I think have the potential to turn A nine ninety into a magnificent rally machine and something that looks different to the existing bike okay. and it brings something new so what we have here let's see if we bring up is a company called Aurora and they're based in Greece and they do I don't know if we can make something bigger no oh that's it no so basically they do a whole front fairing for the 990 so they actually do the one for Chris Cork yeah, yeah, yeah. We know Chris. He's Chris's been on the show quite a few times. Yeah. Yeah. So they they do the front fairing for that, and then on the other hand, we bring you the old school Mioni type 
rear tanks with um, a rerouting of the exhaust. So you're mixing a kind of old yeah. and new because that I remember seeing similar on the six six ninety rally, the proper six ninety. Yeah, rally the the old school, yeah. the old school, uh, yeah, rally replica. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we've got that, and we have a potential to make this into something really quite special and something you don't really see. Uh, what about performance-wise? I mean, I guess in terms of performance-wise, we need to know where the bike is to start with to know whether we need to do upgraded suspension on the front and back and things like that. I, I would have thought for the rear, I would like to kind of maybe strengthen the suspension a bit because if, if we were to look at getting some rear tanks, you've got more weight on the rear subframe. Okay. So I would potentially like to have a look at the rear springs. Um, so yeah, so really that's that's all we'd really need to do. The front suspension, the, the suspension in itself is a is pretty pretty good. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's a case of kind of sucking and see. Yeah. So I guess the next thing for us to do is start fixing <laughs> the the bike. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Getting um, some parts parts together and putting them on and see where we get to see where we get to ready for next show hopefully next show we'll give it we'll have an idea of um at least how long it's going to take to to get yeah. this bike back together and things like that so yeah um okay honestly not where i was expecting to be at this point in time i was confident that you couldn't get the bike we a 990 for four grand so i thought oh you'll never get nine. so we'll be we'll be sitting there with a 660 no. But um, no, I got a nine ninety yeah. for one and a half. Yeah, so in a way, I'm proud of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And in a way, I'm still a bit pissed off. <laughs> Q credits. Ba. <laughs> <laughs>So that was the show. I'm going to finish off, as you can see, with our backdrop where Tom normally films film school. Not lit as it normally is, so it's a little bit dark. Please do not forget to send us your opinions about the Husqvarna because we really, really want to see what you guys think. And we will see you next month. Adventure Bike Shop, proud sponsors of Adventure Bike TV. Rubbish adverts. Greater adventure.